Hey everyone in the YouTube sphere, my name is Young Falcon and welcome to my review of Fantasy Strike. Huge shoutouts to Serlin Games for sending me a review code, it really means a lot. I reviewed this on the PlayStation 4 system, but you can find this fighting game on the PC, PS4, and Nintendo Switch platforms as well. Hopefully it will come to Xbox One, so users over there aren't left out of the fun. So let's dive straight into it. What is Fantasy Strike? Well, it's an accessible beginner fighting game. It's nothing too complex, there's no crazy high octane combat or high levels of execution, it's very similar to games like Super Smash Bros. or Power Stone. You have an attack button, two special buttons, a jump, super, and throw button, and you all use these in tangent to take down your opponents that have six hit points. It's pretty easy, all things considered. Figuring everything out takes not a lot of time, but it's the execution of the game where it starts to get difficult. Learning when to grab, when to counter attacks, when exactly each move's frames end and start, and what's safe on block and what isn't, is where the complexity of the game really shines, and it's a really great way of introducing new and old veterans alike into this really unique fighting system that's a ton of fun to experiment with. If I had to compare it to anything, I'd compare it to games like Rising Thunder, and the up-and-coming Metal Revolution that have extremely similar playstyles. There's 10 unique characters in Fantasy Strike, each with their own unique archetype and character moveset. There's rushdown characters, zoner characters, grapplers, and wild cards, and as I stated before, they all have their own unique way of playing the game. My personal favorites are Janna, Valerie, and Setsuki, as I put in the most time with them. I did obviously play as Grave for the tutorial segment of the game to learn the controls in the sort, but there are a lot of characters I kind of skipped out on and haven't really got around to just because I'm having so much fun with the team I'm playing with now, and I kind of don't want to drop them. Suffice to say, characters are a blast to play in this game, and there's a lot of content in here too, surprisingly, ranging from arcade modes, survival modes, and even ranked play and casual matches alike. There's also a pretty robust friend system, and again, being able to play crossplay with other consoles is extremely helpful in boosting the longevity of an indie game like this. I really do enjoy the amount of lengths they go to to help new players and old players alike get used to the combat and system that Fantasy Strike has to offer. There's character tutorials on each character in the game, each going over what makes characters strong, what combos are most effective to use, how to mix up opponents, etc, etc. I'm really glad that these tutorials are built into the core gameplay and not found somewhere on a YouTube channel or something like that because it really, really helps when it comes to wanting to figure out what your character does. And if you want to experiment further and go in yourself and go into training modes and piece things together, there's a frame by frame mechanic where you just hold down a button, go frame by frame frame and see exactly what moves are safe on block, what moves aren't, when to use things in what scenario, and of course recording and playbacking things which is extremely helpful. This game goes out of its way to make sure you can understand its mechanics and I can definitely applaud developers when they do things like that. The game's art style was on point as well, I love its anime shell shaded visuals and it really makes the character design stand out. It has a nice look to things and the stage backgrounds go a long way of feeling extremely presentable and I just enjoy all the moving cogs that are playing throughout the game. So with that all being said, well what else is there to talk about? I guess there is one really important thing we should cover. The online, the netcode, the experience. Is it good? Is it bad? Well, I could say confidently after clocking around four to five hours of online straight, it's really, really good with a couple of odd matches here and there. For the most part, all my matches ran smoothly, even the three to four bars or even two bars at times with hundreds of ping still went really smoothly. I don't know how to exactly describe it, there was obviously input delay there, but it was never to the point where I felt like I couldn't win or that it was the game actively fighting against me. It was always doable and it just kind of was a little bit more of a nuisance than an absolute hindrance to my gameplay. And when it was working smoothly, around the 40 to 50 ping, it was incredibly smooth, it was really fun walking in on opponents, rushing them down, getting tick throws, reading rolls correctly, all that good stuff. Everything about the game just felt like it was firing off all cylinders, and that's really strong when I'm playing online. I mainly cross-connect with PS4 and PC players, I'm guessing the switch base is pretty low knowing the game for Knowing games like this tend to not perform well on the Switch, so I'm not too concerned, but hopefully I'll be able to get some friend matches in with someone who has a Switch version so I can report back to you guys on that. 
And speaking of matches, I found matches incredibly quickly. It seems like there's still an active player base for this game, and I was quickly finding matches time in and time out over and over again, with roughly 30 seconds to a minute of cooldown between matches in casual play. However, when we move over to ranked, there were a couple of issues, and I'm not going to lie. It took a little bit longer to find matches, ranging from a minute to sometimes a minute and 30 seconds, and I often found myself fighting not human opponents at times. Sometimes I was just fighting CPU. I'm guessing that's because of a lack of players online in that mode or because of my rank because I was bronze. I don't necessarily know all the caveats behind that, but I'm glad they do throw something in there to kind of push things going through, knowing how, well, to be blunt, weird the ranked play is in this game. Ranked play is a little bit different than other fighting games. It's not just you choose your character, you go online, you rank up. No, here it's you choose three characters in a team matched format, and you kind of fight people a la King of Fighters style, but instead of you being able to choose exactly which three you want in which order, you kind of rotate between them in this weird hodgepodge randomized thing. It's kind of not fun. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I do enjoy how it's this tournament mode and it really encourages you to get better with other characters in the game, but also sometimes I just want to play as one single character and it gets kind of annoying that I have to circle throughout three and ranked in order to rank up, which causes a lot of people, and as I've seen with the online, go straight to casual matches. My only recommendation for that is maybe instead of having this ranked tournament mode, let that be a side thing where it's still available and we can still do ranked team matches which is tons of fun but also have a ranked solo match mode in there too because i really just want to see my character climb the ranks with the person i'm trying to learn and play not necessarily with juggling like three different other characters despite them all being pretty easy to learn and pick up and have fun with i kind of just want to play one and see how far i can get but overall despite that tiny gripe i really did enjoy my time with fantasy strike it was an absolute blast being able to play through all of these really unique and fun characters Characters. The online ran pretty darn smoothly, the stages, art style, all that stuff was really nice to look at, and most importantly, the gameplay was tons of fun. It's really easy to pick up and play, it's pretty hard to master, and it takes a lot of time to figure everything out and read each frame and know what characters work and what characters don't. However, with that all being said, I can't really knock it. It is a wonderful title, especially for the price point given with $20, and I highly recommend you pick it up on any platform of your choice considering there is crossplay, and that's a huge deal for me personally. So, do I recommend Fantasy Strike? Yes, especially if you're trying to learn how to play 2D fighters. Yeah, you're gonna miss some of the execution with Hadouken motion, sure you can input, etc. But what matters is you're going to be able to figure out and piece together exactly what makes these games work. You're gonna be learning when you want to apply pressure, when you want to back off, when you want to hold blocks and learn to fight through disadvantage and things of that nature. It's very important for you to learn these fundamentals and the game does an incredible job of not only introducing you to those through the wonderful tutorial in the beginning of the game and the endless amounts of character tutorials that are featured in the core gameplay, in the core game, but it also does that through the training modes, the frame counters, and of course going online and getting whooped a couple of times to figure out the mechanics. I highly recommend Fantasy Strike once again, I cannot state that more, it's such a good time and I'm really upset that I missed this one last year and I really don't want you guys to miss it either so please pick up Fantasy Strike if you can especially since it is on sale on Steam currently and on a couple of other platforms thanks to Lunar New Year sales and the sword. My name is Young Falcon signing out. Thank you all for watching this video. If you enjoy my content, please leave a like and comment down below and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.